So one very important thing I want to show you guys is the difference between all these type of pressures. Atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure, absolute pressure, vacuum pressure. It makes you crazy, especially if you have no idea what it is. So let's make everything clear. Uh, common types, there are of course more types, but the most common one that we are going to encounter here in the mechanical energy equation exercises or in fluid dynamics are these four. So, first one, atmospheric pressure, probably is the most familiar one. It is the pressure that the atmosphere applies to the Earth. So you're probably crazy and you will say, I don't feel any pressure. That's because your body is used to it and wishes not to feel it. But actually, you are right here and the air is pushing you everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. It varies with height because, of course, if you know, you have very... A lot of material right here of air and you have almost nothing of air right here. So I love this measure of one atmosphere because it relates you very easily to the atmospheric pressure. So if I tell you 10 atmospheres, then we're talking about 10 times the pressure exerted in the atmospheric pressure. Uh, if you wanted a more formal definition, it's 101,325 pascals or Newton per square meter and this is kind of crazy, imagine we have this some dude right here actually I think it's, I would say it's North Dakota, I don't know, I have no idea uh, measures 2 meters 1 meter and 1 meter, so you have 1 cube, 1 square meter and the guy will measure all the fluid that is up which is essentially just air and it will Calculate the amount of pressure here, so the force exerted, actually force equals the weight, which is mass times gravity. And that number resulted or showed to be 101,325 newtons per each uh, square meter. So hopefully you get the idea, if not there are plenty of videos showing you what does atmospheric pressure means, but essentially it's just the pressure that exerts the atmosphere. One other pressure which is also used is the gauge pressure. It's essentially the additional pressure in a system relative to the atmospheric pressure. So it is pretty convenient because for real or practical applications it's fast. For example you have this, let's say your bike, and then you if you measure this you take it out away it will measure zero but actually you know I told you before the atmospheric pressure is not zero is one atmosphere but we don't want to have the reference so we take away that one and we make it zero so whatever pressure you have here that's gauge that's the pressure inside this let's say tire with respect of an atmosphere so probably you've heard as well all these tires, the typical recommended pressure is either 32 to 34 psi. psi is essentially pounds per square inch, which is of course pounds force per square inch. It's also a measure of pressure. So let me show you an example. Actually, if you are using the English system, if you are American, you probably very used to have psi with a little a right here, which means it's the absolute pressure or PSIG, this little g right here means it's gauge so what I mean is essentially, if you have 33 right here that's the gauge pressure but if you wanted to know the total pressure guys will be the pressure of the tire that is shown in the, oops, of the tire, let's say small t plus the atmospheric pressure which is also exerted so the material is actually having a total pressure of 47.7 psi and I write this A to note you that this is at absolute pressure so the total pressure exerted will be the total force right? you need to add the total forces per unit area so it's actually one at always add one atmosphere times the gauge pressure because we will 
used in the ideal gas law we will use the absolute pressure or mechanical energy equation you either use gauge pressure in every term or you use the absolute pressure in every term guys so just be sure to use if you use for example in this side of a point a you use absolute pressure you need to use absolute pressure in b now last but not least and this is not that common but anyways you may encounter it is the vacuum pressure it is actually a negative value of a pressure but you know there is no actually negative pressure which means this is that it's below the atmospheric pressure but it is more than zero so any any value between zero and one will be your vacuum pressure so probably you will feel suction because of course if you have a low pressure here and you have the atmospheric pressure which is higher expect of course flow to the low pressure one and that's why you feel suction because material goes inside the low uh, pressurized uh, container and that's essentially everything vacuum gauge and absolute so just recall absolute is the addition of all the pressures so you could have vacuum pressure plus gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure and that should give you the absolute pressure on a system. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface. So for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here if you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.